Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's look at easy Google Earth Zoom from space. All right, let me show you what I've created and then we'll break it all apart. So we zoom into my spot, so some clouds that I added, and then we dissolve into a video. All right, so there's several things here. The first thing to do is to install Google Earth Pro. Google Earth Pro is an application you can run on Mac and Windows, and this is where we're going to generate the video, which is really a bunch of still images. Now, what I like to do is turn off as many things as possible so you're just getting the, the, the view and not borders and labels and names like that. So in the bottom left, turn everything off. I'm using 3D building, so that is turned on. Everything else is turned off. And what I'm doing is I'm going to a location, searching for a location, and then I'm saving that here. And when you click, you're saving a new place mark. And I've, they show up in here. Once they show up in here, you can right click on them and you can add a folder. And that's what I've done here. I've added one a folder for, for Statue of Liberty and one of the CN Tower. And when you're adding them, you can turn off the little icon. It's hard to, it's easy to miss. This little button here, you change it to no icon. Otherwise, when you zoom in, you'll see one of these placeholders in there and that ruins the whole effect you're trying to create as, as photorealistic as it, as it can be. Also, don't name it because the name will show up. Instead, just type a description. So this is zoomed out from Earth. That's where that one is. And if I double click on this one, it takes me to that location. The speed that we're zooming in is controllable in the preferences, which I'll just show you in the options. I'll show you that in a second. So you, you save the zoomed out Earth, and then you go to the place you want to go, add another place mark, add that. So now I've got two place marks. This one that takes me back to, to my zoomed out Earth, and the other one where I'm going. Now I could have zoomed out a little bit more and you can't get rid of the overlay text at the bottom. Um, you can turn your controls off, but I like to have them available. But what you can do, as I'll show you in Premiere Pro, is if you zoom 125% uh, and position the output, it hides the rest of the stuff. Some people will actually use a screen capture utility to capture that. I don't think that that'll give you the best, smoothest quality. All right, let's go look at where you set things up. So in the tools, options, 3D view, I've set these to all the default settings. The cache, you wanna make sure that this is up pretty high. We're not using the tour, we're using navigation. So this is where you can set the speed and you'll have to change that depending on, on how, um, how quickly you want that zoom. I wanted mine fairly slow. Next, it's about what you're saving. And I tried movies, I tried an MP4, and because Google Earth is rendering 3D and imagery and full screen and capturing, it didn't do a good job of making a movie, even on a powerful computer. It Wherever it stuttered, the, the resulting movie would stutter. So here's what we get around that, by making images. All right, so for that, we go to Movie Maker, back in the tools. And down at the bottom, file type, a ping sequence. Portable network graphics, ping sequence. This is what the pros use. Um, if they're not using OpenEXR for industrial light and magic, the next level down for you and me is a ping sequence. They're big, beautiful, full frame images. And because they're saved one after another, there's not going to be any stuttering at all. Uh, the next 
I also chose to use a live mouse and keyboard navigation instead of picking a tour. A tour is different from these place markers. A tour, you have to save it, and I found it too cumbersome. It's To me, it was much easier for me to control when I start, and then where it stops is where your final place mark is. You pick a folder here of where the stills are going to be. Don't put these on the desktop because you could have hundreds or thousands of these stills. Pick a folder, name it, whatever the, the uh, destination is, and you can set up the picture size here. I'm just doing HD 30 frames a second and picture quality, I set mine at, at high. So when you create the movie, it's going to start placing these in that folder. So you, you, you let it sit for a couple of seconds at this zoomed out value, and then you just double click on your other location. And it's constantly spitting out these, these ping files for every single frame that's going by. Okay, and what you end up with is this, a bunch of stills. And these are a bunch of, uh, I, this was a JPEG format that I tried first. And you can see it's just that. It's a bunch of these. There's several hundred of them. And that's, so that's the Statue of Liberty. And here's the CN Tower one that I did. And you finally end up at your location here. Okay, but there's a problem. For whatever reason, Google Earth did not number these sequentially. It missed numbers, which baffled me completely because this is what happens when I brought them into, and we can fix that, by the way. So watch what happens. You'll see these red frames come up. Come on, where are you? Oh, there we go. Right there. So it was missing a frame, and, and that's the warning you get in Premiere Pro when a frame is missing. When you tell Premiere Pro how to import sequence a, a sequence of stills, which I'll show you in a second, if they're not numbered correctly, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, if it's one, two, three, seven, then Premiere Pro will say, you're missing frames. So I had to fix each one of these outputs. It's really easy. Use Bridge. So you open up the folder of where the images are, select all of them, Control A, Command A, Tools, Batch Rename, and I just rename this text, Liberty, underscore, and then the number. Make sure that this first one starts at one. And you're gonna see down at the bottom, that's uh, how it's it makes it. So you click the rename button here and it renames them all. Keeps them in the same folder. So you, you, you don't have to copy them to a, a different location. It's just renaming this. So do this before you import it into Premiere Pro. So you used Movie Maker, a couple of place marks, you uh, spit out a bunch of stills. Now all you have to do is import this. Don't use the import mode because that doesn't support stills, you can use the file menu, import, control I on Windows, command I on the Mac, or you can double click in an area that is empty. You select the first one and you make sure image sequence is turned on and then click open. And what happens is, it brings all of those stills in as a video. So this is a video, but it's, whoops. That's the sequence. This is the video, but it's a bunch of still images. And the quality you can see is as best as can be. Now, one thing I, I did forget to show you back in, in Google uh, Earth, is you want to cache, if you're using 3D buildings, and actually, it, I would just say, go to the location at least two or three times, and you'll start to cache the 3D buildings. 
because you don't want to capture the 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 buildings uh, being made. So you can see all of those 3D buildings uh, are there. So you just do it a few times. and it's gonna cache that information. If you've got a three button mouse, you can click with the middle mouse button and uh, it's a little easier to navigate this stuff and, and find a good place for it. All right, so once you have that, it's just like a video. You drag it into your timeline and play it back. And then I've added these, these clouds. The clouds are actually transparent. Um, if we look at transparency grid, you can see they're transparent clouds. All I really did was just take a bunch of, of uh, well, I first I made a Photoshop layer of a bunch of clouds, not clouds straight on, but clouds from above that I found out there somewhere. And uh, I stacked them on a bunch of different layers. I did use After Effects uh, because you, there was no 3D zoom in Premiere Pro. And I zoomed in on the different, the camera's going down and it's going through all the clouds. Um, it didn't work as good as I wanted. I, I, ha I actually have a bit of motion blur going on. So eh, I thought they were okay. And then we just dissolve into a video. And the quality, like I said, is fantastic. And you could put birds or planes or whatever you want and fly around. And then the, here's the Statue of Liberty one. Same kind of idea. Those clouds looked a little bit better, the zooming of the clouds right there. So there you go, uh, a few tips to try to keep things as clean as possible in uh, Google Earth Pro, uh, get rid of all the, the stuff that, that makes it look like a map because you want to make it look more like a, a, a camera flying in from space. All right, now I wanted to show you how you can hide those overlays select the clip in the timeline and go to the motion settings and go to scale and make it 125. And it hides all that stuff. Hey, if you're new to Video Revealed and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to uh, keep a lookout because uh, this was for Ryan Hussein who asked me about this a few years ago when this was much, much harder. And uh, uh, it, I kind of put it on the back burner, brought it back out when it became much easier as far as Google Earth Pro uh, is concerned. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith. And it's my job to uh, keep my ears open and uh, uh, listen to the, your, your questions and turn them into useful tutorials.